there is a grizzly bear feeding on the beach pretty close to our boat. But now we got to watch the grizzly bear from a hot tub. Crazy. Welcome back. You're joining us aboard our 30-foot floating home here in Canada's longest glacial fjords. A tiny speck in the utter vastness of this northern wilderness known as the Great Bear Rainforest. A land of giants, glacial-fed waters, and as the name suggests, very large bears. We spent the past few weeks sailing through these remote waterways, carved out by glaciers of the last ice age, tested by wild mountain winds and tricky anchoring situations with a few moments of bliss thrown in. It's incredible to be able to soak in hot springs while looking out at your sailboat on anchor. So we just made a really cool discovery here. We've been enjoying living from the wild, but we're getting low in necessities. So this week we're making our way out of the fjords in search of supplies. But it turns out the nearest civilization shut down a long time ago. It's such an airy feeling. It's completely abandoned. This is a wild and unique adventure you won't want to miss. So be sure to subscribe and welcome aboard. Good morning. It's about 7.30 a.m. and I just woken up. I made some coffee and crawled out of the companionway and noticed that there is a grizzly bear feeding on the beach pretty close to our boat. We've never actually seen a grizzly bear from our boat before, so this is really exciting. It's low tide right now, so he's just having a dig through the sand and the mud, looking for tidal critters, probably clams and mussels. He's totally unbothered by anything happening around him. He's just... Uh, really focused on whatever he's trying to get out of there. We've had two cups of coffee and we've been watching this bear the entire time. Pretty cool thing to see this morning. I'm super, super stoked. It's really cool to see a grizzly bear this morning. This is the first time I've ever seen one from the boat and they're freaking huge. They've got this massive camel's hump between their shoulders, which is, makes them really easy to distinguish from a black bear. Like, you know straight away that is definitely not a black bear. He's just kind of been hanging around on like the low tide flats, flicking over rocks and digging in the mud. The birds absolutely love it though, because they're just like diving in behind him, coming over and bothering him and like just raking through all the stuff that he's turning up. It must be like a feeding frenzy for them over there with like all the worms and stuff. The tide's slowly been rising though and as we've been watching him and drinking coffee all morning he's like just slowly working his way back up to the high tide line and sitting in the grass kind of just like scratching his belly and hanging out. We'll keep a good eye on him because we do want to go have a quick soak in the hot tubs here this morning before we get underway. There is a hot spring here at this anchorage. We were actually here about a week ago, which we did a video about, and it was super, super hot and buggy. And that was during a high pressure system, but it's been a low pressure system for the past five days. And so the weather is a lot more moody and wet. There's sort of low lying clouds sticking to the mountain peaks and everything's just a little bit more cool and damp this morning. So the hot springs are definitely 
calling to us <laughs> more than they did last time. It's going to turn back to a high pressure system over the next couple of days. So all of the cloud and the low hanging cloud in the valleys here will probably start to lift. I mean, I can already see blue sky up there this morning. And then we'll be back to steady northwesterlies out on the coast and strong inflow winds. So I think we're going to go for a quick soak this morning and then we'll get underway heading the rest of the way out of Dean Channel. Um, I'm not quite sure whether we're going to go for sheer water today or whether we might make a stop in Ocean Falls. It really just depends on what the conditions are. Either way, you look, we're looking at like a 30 odd nautical mile trip. So our bear is sort of over this way, and we are going way over there. So I think we're good. He's just hanging out. He's a comfortable enough distance away that I think we're good. <laughs> we'll keep an eye on him just in case, but it's better to see him and know that he's here. In any case, we've got our bear spray and our bear knife, and we are somewhat prepared. Yeah. It's better off to know where he is, that way you can keep an eye on him. We have an outboard engine, but uh, we prefer not to use it. Just good old pile power. I guess we'll be grizzly bear gazing from the hot tub. I mean, that's pretty sweet, isn't it? Come to you hot, hot springs. You can watch grizzly bears across the estuary while you soak your weary bones. This place rocks. So much better than the first time here. That was, we got way baked out that day. It was just too hot. The hot tub was too hot. Out here was too hot. It was just no fun. But now we got to watch the grizzly bear from a hot tub. Perfect temperature today. Oh my gosh, it's so nice. Wow. I can't believe we can see a bear. <laughs> He's exactly straight across from here. It's so crazy. <laughs> How is there nobody here? I don't know, they all buggered off this morning too early. Crazy. Wow. I'm so glad that we came to shore and bathed this morning because we weren't thinking about skipping out because we did it last night, but my God, I think this has just been the most magical experience I've ever had slowly wafting steam coming off the estuary, a grizzly bear off in the distance, misty clouds. It's pretty phenomenal. What an absolutely spectacular morning. Wowzers. How's that? That was lovely. Absolutely lovely. Nothing like a hot cruiser's bath to start the day. Beautiful.
really hot in here. <laughs> We're the only boat on anchor here this morning. Everybody else is buggered off already, but it's really cool. Very, very good day to be alive. Come at high tide, come during a low pressure system when there's clouds, come when the hot water has been plugged a little bit so that the bath is cooled down, take a cruiser's bath. I would give this hot spring now a 10 out of 10 for experience. The Grizzly Repair might make it an 11 out of 10. It's up there, would highly recommend. Beautiful anchorage. Also, no flies during a low pressure system. They kind of all bugger off, they don't like the rain, so... It kind of fixed all the problems that we had last time coming here, this time. So we should probably get out of here before that changes, because the high pressure's coming back and I'm sure the bugs will come back and... it'll get baking hot in here again. But very glad that we stopped by. I don't think there's meant to be much wind today. The forecast was for light variable winds out on the coast, so unless there's a significant inflow this morning, which I doubt because there's still plenty of cloud cover, um, I imagine it would be just like a straight up motor out of here. But that'll be cool. We'll just go along the shore, probably troll some salmon along the way. We finally finished eating that bloody halibut. It took us like five days, it was a million and a half meals, but all of them were absolutely phenomenal. So yeah, we can get back to fishing and not feel bad about like whatever we catch because now we're out of, out of protein again. So, that's a bonus. Good holding here, hey? Good solid mud. <laughs> no wash down pump. is why would we want to leave such an incredible anchorage and that is because we have been off grid on the boat for about two weeks and with our small 30 foot sailboat that's pretty well the max we can go for a little bit longer but the problems that we run into is a we don't have any refrigeration on the boat and b we don't have a huge amount of water storage we're not able to make our own water and so we kind of have to carry whatever we intend to use. So in two weeks we pretty well go through all of our fresh water supply as well as all of our delicious provisioned goods. We could stretch it for a couple more days but it's time. It's time to continue on to the next. Oh yeah there's a big coho on the end of this one for sure. A big seminoid creature. I don't think there's anything on it. No way to it without bringing you down. Had two good bites on the line so far, but haven't been able to land it. It's kind of frustrating actually. You're not allowed to fish for salmon with hooks. Like, sorry, you, you fish for all fish with hooks, but you're not allowed to have barbs on your hook so they can spit the hooks pretty easily. I suppose it's meant to make it more fair game because if you have barbs, then it's kind of like 
you know, a sure thing. Bit of a bummer about that, but I hope hoping to get another bite as we come along. We're just working our way down the channel. Glossy, calm seas, absolutely no wind. So if you're gonna motor, you may as well troll at the same time. So we're just working our way along the shore here, cruising along at, you know, 2.8, three knots thereabouts. Fish like to, when they run up the channels, they like to stay near shore because it's less current for them to deal with. So we'll just work the shorelines and see what becomes and maybe we'll have some fish to fill our bellies and make beautiful gravlax with. about 30 nautical miles until the next small town. So it's called Ocean Falls. It used to be a thriving community, I think, back when they had a big paper mill, and now I think it's sort of fizzled out, and there's not a lot of folks living there now. So I think the facilities will be pretty basic, and we probably won't be able to stock up on a whole lot of fresh goods, but we'll see when we get there. So we're starting to get a little bit hungry, and I think I'm gonna use up the last of our fresh produce to make us some vegetables vegetarian tacos. We've got one green pepper, one sweet potato left, some black beans, canned salsa, all that good stuff. So I think I'll make us a little taco lunch, a little taco siesta. So good. Wow. Another 10 out of 10 meal. Just delicious. Those tacos were freaking amazing. Really, really good. Like, unbelievably good for not having any fresh groceries for like the last two weeks. It's amazing that Western brand feta cheese hasn't gone moldy. That's a miracle within of itself. But the other miracle that just occurred is that we came around a point and now we have a little bit of wind. Not a lot of wind, not enough to like successfully tack up, but enough to bother putting the main up so that we can motor sail. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna toss the main up and hopefully we can, you know, get an extra half a knot of speed bombing straight out of the inlet here. sideways. That seems to have done the trick. We're now doing about a knot faster in the direction that we want to go, so can't really complain about free energy, which is exactly what's going on up at Ocean Falls, coincidentally. Bit of the back history on it. It used to be kind of a boom town back in the 50s. I think it had a population of like three or four thousand people who were living up there, you know, working at the mill, working at the pulp factory, building a dam. However, the town kind of just sort of petered away after the 50s. You know, by the 70s, I think there was like 1,200 people living there. And then these days, I think there's like three dozen full-time residents. So I'm not really sure what we'll find there in terms of provisioning or anything. Shearwater or Bella Bella, I think is usually the closest stop or well, the better stop for actually get buying stuff. But Ocean Falls seems to be a really cool place to check out. It does have one thriving industry though, which is really, really cool. It has one of the only completely renewable energy, sorry, one of the only completely renewable energy-based Bitcoin mining operations, which is apparently thriving. One of the big problems with mining Bitcoin is that it's incredibly energy intensive and Ocean Falls just happens to have a hydroelectric dam that's left over. Who could have thought? So they've set up a Bitcoin mining operation up there that's completely based with renewable energy. Freaking brilliant. It's amazing. It probably keeps all 36 people employed. Wild. Anyway, we're gonna go check that stuff out. 
Seems like a pretty cool kind of ghosty town. So yeah, that's where we're headed. sails are out we're doing five five and a half knots very rarely can you actually sail with the full canvas and the full 160 out usually it's too much wind there goes the rest of us <laughs> oh, i come to life <laughs> when the engine turns off it's fine to be motoring for like one hour, two hours, but when you're motoring all day, it's just like, it's noise. What is it? It's like noise fatigue. We have a Beta Marine tractor engine. It's glorious. It just sips fuel, chugs along, it always starts up. We have no issues with it the last, the past two years, but it is so dang loud and it just feels so good to turn it off and go with the power of the wind. It's like so rejuvenating, I have so much energy now. I was like starting to fade a little bit and being like, are we there yet? Wanting to have a beer and all that jazz. Now we're sailing. <laughs> Pretty nice when you can balance the boat upwind like this because it gives you a break from helming all the time. The boat just holds its course nice and balanced and we can pretend for a second that we have an autopilot. <laughs> this is such a cool rock feature here. It looks like a big water slide. I've never seen anything like that. It's really, really neat. Yeah, it really makes you want to like suds yourself up and just <laughs> straight down. Totally. <laughs> It probably runs a pretty nice waterfall during the rainy season. You can see that there's like water running off some of the granite up higher up. Well, how are we going with our tacking situation so far? It's pretty nice sailing. Like always, one tack is always way longer than the other tack. So we seem to be doing pretty good on our port tack when we're heading in the direction that we want to go. And then our starboard tack is just bringing us directly back across the other side of the inlet. So on one tack, you're making really good ground to windward. And on the other tack, you're still making ground to windward, but just a lot less. So we're just gonna bring the boat as far across over to the good side as we can before making our tack and trying to get as far as we can on the other side. It's a bit of a playing game, but you know, we're moving along at five knots fairly comfortably. So we can't really complain. It's the first sunshine we've seen in days. So everything is pretty good, really. That's why we have a sailboat so that we can sail it. The wind is very fluky though.
this never happens, but the wind angle is so good right now as we're tacking upwind that we're actually going exactly in the direction that we want to be going upwind. That's crazy. <laughs> you never get that coming out in inlet. The wind's coming and flowing up the inlet, but because it's bouncing around the sides, you're actually finding a wind angle that is holding you going straight out the inlet, which is <laughs> crazy. Yeah, we thought we were going to have to do some major zigzagging back and forth up the inlet. So the first two tacks, we didn't make a whole lot of headway, but then we just, we put it on the third tack and we're just cruising right out of here. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. It's pretty fabulous. Had to jump in here to say how exciting that is because rarely, rarely do you get this. <laughs> Blissful upwind sailing. You can never say that. It's like a champagne sailing day. Flat, calm seas, probably like 10 knots of wind, some little gusts here and there. We've got the full main up in 160 all the way out. We're riding the tank. <laughs> Our boat is so small, I can't like put the camera up and not have you in it. <laughs> That wasn't the case Knowing we're living is such a blessing I know But I don't want to spend just too long stuff but this way It's never enough And I've learned When I have less It eases this damp stress And we be foolish for too long I think I've written every song Soon From here on till the moon We're here on the dock in Ocean Falls, an abandoned, off the beaten track place that we've been wanting to check out for so long. Everybody who was living here, their lives were absolutely uprooted. Everything they had worked towards over the last years of living here, just gone, decimated. It's kind of crazy that you can just walk in here. So dark and creepy. I'm good. Super big thanks to our patrons for supporting the continued production of our videos. A little goes a long way to keep small channels like ours alive. You can also show your support by subscribing and liking the vids and writing a note down in the comments. We love hearing from you all. Thank you for being here and we'll see you next time.